uh, Northampton Council on Aging board meeting. It's um, May 16th, 2019. <laughs> and if you have any recording, you're recording yourself, we'd like to know um, at this moment, let us know. So the first thing that I'd like to do, even before we go to the minutes, is to welcome two new members. Bob and Ben. Um, Bob, is it Dion? Yes. And Ben, how do you pronounce Capistrat. Capistrat. He's Without Ben. the T? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Oh. <laughs> sure. But the real way is to say it with the T? No, I, have, I, I guess I don't know. I guess oh. it's, I don't know, it's French. So probably without the team. Can't be strong? Yeah, probably. <laughs> so you say hey? Okay. Yeah. So the, um, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. And so the first order of um, business is to speak to the gentleman who's here to observe. Sir, would you like to speak to the group today? No, I have nothing to say but a lot to listen to. You do? Okay. All right. So, um... I hope everybody had a time to review the minutes from the last meeting. We do have one correction. Jean was excused that, and she was listed as present, which we felt that she was here. No. <laughs> anybody else have any other corrections to the minutes or additions? Oh, yes, sorry, Kim. The, the one thing that I did just want to clarify, and I apologize, I thought I had made this adjustment, but I didn't. For uh, number four under uh, the report that I gave, uh, there's 104 people that have attended movies. That applied to the month of March. Oh, okay. So that's not an overall number, that was yeah. specific to March. Just for March, great. Okay. All right, I see the next. Yes. The number looks a little better that way. Just that. <laughs> Anything else? So, um, hearing no more changes, I would like to entertain a motion to um, accept the minutes with the changes. So moved. And all those in. Oh, second. anyway, second. Second. Dennis. All those in favor, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed or abstain. Okay. So the minutes are passed as as is. Any, anybody have announcements for things they want would like to speak about coming up in senior life? All right, we'll go to old business and the golden age meal tax exemption application for the Department of Revenue. So um, I did receive a second rejection letter. Um, we don't, they're saying we don't qualify because we, it still says in our bylaws and in the, um, the city's uh, administrative code that we do serve people under 60. So um, in order to get the exemption, we have to only serve people over 60. Um, Does that mean you have to change the price of the meals? No, 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 no. So uh, it, um, I just, yeah, we are paying the tax. Um, it's rolled into the, the price of the $3 meal. Um, but I, it would help us to be able to support the program more if we didn't have to pay that tax. Um, how much do we pay in tax in a year? What is it? How much does it take out of the budget? Do you know? Um, well, that really, I'd have to look at how many meals have been sold since October, I think it started. So, um, I, just, I didn't know monthly if you had to It's about $20 a week. $20 a week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the about okay. $10 is each meal. Two Tuesdays. Tuesday or 10 Thursdays. Okay. Approximate. Mm -hmm. Kathy, does that include like the coffee shop? No. No. Just the yeah. bistro. So generously, it's a thousand dollars a year. Yeah, I mean, people are paying tax in the coffee mm -hmm. shop also. Yeah, no, no, right. So you know, our fifty cents, our fifty cents cup cup of coffee is actually, That's a tax um, you know, I think fifty three cents. <laughs> so, um, 
it's, it's 47 cents, or then you add the taxes and, and three cents is added mm -hmm. on to it. Um, so, uh, and this is just a question about the tax for since the charter is being reviewed, is it worth it for us as the council to go to one of the meetings and say, or is it desirable to go to the meeting and change the administrative code in the charter so that we say 16 over, and then it's easy enough for us to change the bylaws, but the administrative code is what controls controls things, actually. Or, or right, but are, or we, shouldn't, or are we going to limit um, the age for in coming well, to the building the to 60, or do we, I think that... Um, that's why I said we're desirable. Right, I mean, I, I think we do have, um, I don't know the exact numbers of people between 55 and 59 <laughs> who are coming, but um, there are definitely coming to work in that age group. And they, and they are paying the $7 rate for lunch, so. Which is rolled in, taxes rolled in, too. Yeah, yeah. So, so the answer would be probably not. Yeah, I kind of feel like at this point, um, if funding becomes really restrictive in the future, we might have to think about the age groups that we're serving, but I, you know, I think that um, it's not enough of a savings to really uh, warrant excluding yeah. the population. Yeah, no, it's not worth the hassle of the exclusion. Right, yeah. right. No, I would agree with that. Right. What was the hassle of the exclusion? The messaging. We, we want to serve those people. Right. right. Yeah. So, um, so I hope everybody saw, saw the chronicle. I thought the articles and the photographs of people that were in were just, it was just lovely. And uh, we still have some people, is it this one? We still have some people to interview and get in there. I know Donna's not in there, and now we have two new members. And who else hasn't been, Deborah hasn't been interviewed? Or, or it's, not, it's, not, it's not an interview. It's not interviews. It's, right. it's, 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 it's a bio. Their bios. Yes. Yeah. 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 Did everyone write their own bio, or did you write? I mean, no, I didn't. I didn't write it. No, I they were just lovely. Just, lovely. I just did some editing. Well written, and they were lovely photographs. I, I, I've had people comment about it, so it came out very, very nice. We use other people's pictures. You had a touch up. A touch up artist. I wanted to piggyback on that and say the same thing. That was our intent when we had proposed it, and I've gotten comments from different people about how much they liked it. And then, of course, I wanted to redo my picture because because I didn't like my picture, but we were so we were tiny. in it together. Yeah, <laughs> but I like your you just not mine. No. But um, I also wanted to just mention briefly. I don't know if it may happen to you now that you're in there. Part of there's an upside and a downside to visibility. Uh, the upside is it's doing what we want to do, which was to have people come to talk to us about programs and services according to, you know, what our responsibilities and duties are. The downside are there may be people who come, which has happened to me, who want to talk to me about things that we don't actually have anything to do with, that, you know, and I had to remind people, well, we don't do the budget, or we are not responsible for the facilities, or we are not responsible for staff, or I can't tell the mayor what to do, or the director is in charge of the facilities and the people, and so it can be a little tricky. So, I mean, you have to decide for yourselves how you want to handle, you know, how you want to deal with that. But what I've been saying is, well, thank you very much. Um, our roles and responsibility as ambassadors are for this. And I can't really talk with you about that because I don't have any roles or responsibility and I don't want you to feel like um, that I do. You know, if you want to talk to the mayor or if you want to talk to the director about something, I, I would encourage you to do that if it's something that you're really concerned about. But that's trying to keep the boundaries. So I, I don't know if that happened. It may happen to you because it, it happened to me after I, um, after we did our initial article. So, just want to throw that out there. For me, it was the California Food Research Chronicle. That I believe was 
said, oh, I said, oh, you read the Bible. <laughs> and also, I mean, we had talked in the past, too, about as being ambassadors, being on the board. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that people are, you know, out there more. I know I, I was here for the entire health and safety fair, which I, I was before I was on the board, but so I, the council, council, sorry, council, and um, I got quite a few earfuls of things that people, I actually had my name tag on that said board member, so that brought, oh. that brought conversation, so I do want to encourage people to find something that you, that you might enjoy and, and do it here, or or if you you know you can't because of your work schedule, you might want to volunteer at something because mm -hmm. we have after hours kinds of things too. So. Yes, Deborah. I just had a question about that. I was curious if there were going to be name tags for board members on. Uh, I'm sorry, council members <laughs> on the day of the health fair, health and safety fair, because I was here that day also. So I was just curious how that works, and if. You know, and if we had name tags for some board members but not for others, and maybe it's, uh, I'm sorry, you know, I'm, I apologize. I mean, council, and perhaps it's up to each of us to kind of let someone know that we will be in attendance so that a name tag can be made for us. You know, but when you mentioned that, it just made me think of it, yeah. that's all. Well, there's a name tag because I'm a volunteer here. I just right. I couldn't find the one that said volunteer. It's, it does say board member. Yeah, it does. But um, if you're if you volunteer at the senior center, there's a, a stack of like a tray of alphabetical mm -hmm. um, name tags. So I just went in there and grabbed my name tag that day. But you weren't really representing the board that day. You no, no but I'm happy to um, simultaneously have worn both hats and represent the board. It would have been my pleasure to. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> council. It would have been my pleasure to do that. But I'm just thinking maybe it might be a good idea um, for events to that if there are council members are going to be in attendance, I'm just throwing it out there as a suggestion, that it may be a way for us to be identified if we are going to be in attendance, uh, that, you know, like you said, we're ambassadors, you know, and so people would feel comfortable coming up to us. So that's what I wanted to suggest. Thoughts about that. I mean, do we need to decide well, I mean, I look at it as, I mean, if, if you're a volunteer and you have a name tag, you can write council member with your name on your volunteer. I don't think the staff, Yeah, I, don't I have, mean, you have enough to do. That. I mean, it's something I think yeah. I could do. It's like when I go to places, they give me a name tag and I write my name and I write whatever. And you don't want to interfere by having a name tag on and making you look official if you're in a class with other people and you want to be an equal member in the class. Well, I, yes. There might be a time and a place to wear them. Right, like for events. For, sure. for an event, and I think Kathy knows what I'm talking about. Many of us probably know what I'm referring to. So it could be, um, I don't think it's something that it, that we need to do brain surgery over, but at least to kind of consider the merits of when it is appropriate for us to be identified. Yeah, I, uh, I think that okay. we, we should decide when we want, we want to make the council more visible at certain functions. Mm -hmm. I think that might be helpful. Like Dennis was at the LGBTQ luncheon, right? And a lot of people bent, bended your ear, right? Right, and that was helpful. Right. Or at no, the volunteer like, luncheon. Nice, uh, instead of a name tag, just well, we had a name tag. Well, no, we can make official ones that say uh, COA. Uh, it doesn't right. take a lot to do that. But I, I, I've said enough on that topic yes. now. I think we all get it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go on to new business then. Well, the next three things are three things, four things I asked to put on the agenda, so I guess I'll speak to them. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm on Elder Vision, got elected to Elder Vision, which is the fundraising arm for like the Friends group. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, one of the things that I wanted to bring from Elder Vision next week um, as well is if you have any ideas for fundraising for the senior center for the senior services department um, I'm currently rewriting the bylaws for that because they're a little outdated like when I did it for here because it says that it's um, a group to um, that actually serves the council on aging but since we don't control the facilities we don't have bank accounts mm -hmm. I you know it, that by extension it means the senior center and those sorts of things. So I want to 
um, worked with the uh, board there on revamping what are the things that we would like to raise money for if there's specific things with that Marie or um, other staff want mm -hmm. that the city won't fund or the city can't fund because legally it, mm -hmm. it can't do that. Um, you know, so we come up with ideas for things like that. Um, so basically it's just to, you know, you can email me if you have any ideas, if you, um, there's actually a vacancy on the board, if anybody is interested. Um, the bylaws currently state that two members of the seven, seven member board must be members of the Council on Aging, and currently there are two members. But it doesn't say that you can't have more than two. I mean, I think it's a good idea to have members from the community, but... And I'm the other person. Oh, you're the other person. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but, um, may I, Dennis, may yeah. I ask, are you, did Karen, the last I had heard from Karen, she was deliberating whether to stay as president because she wasn't sure if she wanted to be have fundraising responsibilities, and so I, I don't, don't want to talk about elevation business in this meeting. Well, but you, I, we did not hear you identify, if you don't mind me saying, what your role is in that group. Because I think it's fair for us all to know. I'm on the board of directors. Well, uh, so I am responsible too. by the bylaws for collecting funds and dispersing things. So, are, so but, whether the current president wants to say this, I'll totally say But has it, so, it, it's remaining the, in other words, it's remaining the same. As, as I don't right want now. to discuss Elder Vision business at this meeting because it's not okay. appropriate to that. Well, I'm just bringing okay. on behalf of Elder Vision. If you have any ideas about fundraising, please share them. <laughs> okay, and I had brought that up before in here. Excuse me, so hopefully she's people she's will. Busy. I'm going to turn the question around. Yeah. If you don't mind, it is, I think it would be fair. In order to have ideas about fundraising, fundraising for what. So I would, would really right. be helpful if, and I'm not saying today, right. and I, the general, what well, the city won't pay for, but what are those items? I know we saw we a bunch of money coming in from other grant sources, so if you look at all of that and what, what those pay for, what's the universe of items that's left? Right. Category. So what we'll be assessing um, as we do the study this summer with an architect the upgrading of the building and things like that. We'll be assessing what we would like, and, sure. and Kim will be talking about that working group forming. But um, and then then we will decide. Like we will find out what the city may be willing. Like maybe we want to upgrade the the level of flooring beyond what they're willing to pay for. So I mean, there may be things that we could we could contribute to the costs. To, to get the things that so, we want. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I don't know what that is. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that would help inform yeah. how right. you We have, no, you're absolutely right. And that's because that we haven't identified yeah. those things. We're still trying to get the board back up to the full level. Um, and then I, uh, one of the goals I have is to figure out what fundraising things that they've mm -hmm. done in the past, where are the sources of revenue now, mm -hmm. donations, gifts, bequests, where do they come from, mm -hmm. meeting with Marie and the staff uh, as to what are those items. So it's going to be a, a process, but um, I just wanted to get the seed out there that eventually when we know, um, you know, know more, I mean right now, you know, we buy the gift cards for the graduates from the inmates from the bistro. We have the, those little, you know, little items that are ongoing. Um, but then the bigger items, like we had talked about at the last meeting, was if we're buying furniture for picnic for outdoor for, for the summertime for the elders, if the city and the capital budget or the operating budget isn't going to do that, and we don't know when they're going to do that, okay. Marie right, well that didn't research. get put in, that's why, yeah, that's oh. on the docket right now. Oh. Um. And Elder Vision did vote to, so, <coughs> I, I think. I think it'd just be helpful if yeah, yeah. you know, in front of your report, like, funded this, don't want to fund that, that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You don't have to play. Perfect. Did, uh, excuse me, yeah. oh, on right. that, well, on that topic, if, I just want to know, you were, there was some mention just now about the outdoor furniture, and so I just wanted to clarify, whether that did go through, because I was at the meeting, uh, there were only a few of us there where, and I know Marie and Kim, you were there, where I, I was with people who did approve, I think it was $5,000 towards, was that right, towards outdoor furniture? Yes. So I'm just curious what the status of that might be. 
So Kim's going to talk about a working group where we're going to start to work on determining what furniture we're going to get. So that's just an example is all I wanted to, and I figured you would say that. Cynthia, that's an example of the sort of thing everyone might want to know that uh, we've been able to help with. Bob, yeah. you had a question? Yes, uh, can, you, can you tell me what the work, other working groups or subcommittees are in the area? Yeah, Kim is going to um, talk about that in a minute. Okay. And we have some dates to share with everyone. Um, Hold that thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, ne <laughs> the next thing I had was emails or letters of support to the mayor for the department budget request. This is very, very premature and may not have, uh, we may not actually have to do anything. But I just also wanted to plant that seed is that we're in the beginning of the budget process and, and Marie can speak to that. And in general, as ambassadors, we don't, we, obviously we have no role in the budget, we have no responsibilities for that, but one of the things we can do, if it becomes necessary, is advocate to the city council about a program or service in a budget in case they were thinking about cutting it. The way the current city charter works is that uh, the, the mayor presents the budget, the city council cannot increase the budget, they can only delete or decrease items from the budget. Um, and from the capital budget, they can only do the same thing. They can increase things, but they must identify where the revenue source is coming from. So um, Marie is working, you know, with the mayor on coming up with the capital budget, and you know, let her speak generally about that. If at some point in the future, if the city council would go, look. You know, the revenues have gone way down. Marijuana sales are going down as more stores are opening. <laughs> for example, for example, we have to. Uh, you know, the city council wants to cut twenty thousand dollars from the transportation budget of the council on aging. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Is where then we might want to, you know, write a letter or go to the public session of the city council and say, I'm a member of the council on aging and I support the transportation or whatever. So it's way premature, but I just wanted to put that out there. Um, right. But just to clarify, that is not happening. Oh. Right. In case anyone misheard. Thank you. That's not happening right now. Right. <laughs> um, but. You mean but, not yeah. marijuana shop? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure that is happening. Oh. Um, yes, this morning's paper tells us right up the Yes. Street. Town Street is the preferred location, apparently. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Despite the parking. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so the, um, the budget, um, we've actually, um, the budget that looks like it's going forward, and we'll see what happens with City Council, but I, I don't anticipate it not being approved. We're actually getting um, an increase, um, and it, it's good in a lot of ways. I think that um, there's been some shifts in the way that we're going to structure the use of some funding for um, marketing. So um, I did put the marketing out to bid and we'll have signed a contract with, the city signed a contract with the Gazette to handle all our marketing. Um, so um, that will I think be a much better situation and um, you know the capital improvement request that was the one thing that they didn't improve, approve of was my request for outdoor furniture so we went about that through Elder Vision um, and I don't think any nothing was decreased in terms of our staffing funding so and the other capital things they did approve are right. So for for this first year, we will be um, we did get funding to do a study with an architect to look at the use of space in the building and particularly the way that we're interfacing with patrons in reception. Mm -hmm. um, so, but but we will also be looking at upgrading since since the carpeting is twelve years old and things like that. Um, so, you know, we'll sort of be putting together a plan for upgrading things over the next three to, you know, two to five years. I'm hoping that we can do it quicker. And that may, may in, that may be where we go to Elder Vision and say, the city's going to make us wait this long, and we don't want to wait that long, and like, can we raise some money? But, but we'll, we don't know yet. But at this point, I don't feel like 
um, there is a need to advocate for for um, city council. Yeah, because I I do believe it's going to go forward. So, but if I hear otherwise, I will Good. definitely call on you. That will be pending. Yeah. I would add to that it's not just us people who use the services. So oh, definitely. Yeah, that's a much more credible mm -hmm. right. that voice. No yeah. offense to the suggestion, but we're not as credible a voice as someone who's actually, mm -hmm. or a transportation right. or something else, who's actually a recipient who can speak to what And we might know right. people who might be right. willing to come Identify, exactly. at the public session yeah. to do that. I agree. The tech, next two items um, were really just in keeping with the disability thing, and I'm going to you know, let him speak to it because that's really in her report. But as part of the thing to really talk about, you know, what our roles and responsibilities are is to advocate for the services um, and the programs. And so part of that is what's the process for people to speak with us about that or how the senior center is working or the senior services department is, has plans for that. Um, and then how do, how do they evaluate things? So it was really just to talk about um, encouraging, like Jerry Ann had said, in our visibility, whether you're going to a class or attending an event or have an opportunity to work on a working group to do that as a council member so that we, you know, have a more intimate understanding of what the people who use the center are looking for. And so I'll shut up and I'll turn it over to the assistant director. <laughs> Well, thank you, Dennis. <laughs> um, before I jump into the working groups, just a couple of updates. First of all, in, in volunteer recruitment, uh, that's an ongoing process, as you can imagine. Uh, we are specifically looking for a few new volunteers to assist in the beach row. And I'm happy to say that we need that because we are getting phenomenal numbers of people here for lunches <laughs> on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we have have 78 one day, over 90 I think on Mother's wow. Day, and so uh, that number just keeps growing. Um, it especially grows if we show a, a recent movie, <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody, we filled the room for lunch and wow. for the movie, so uh, the wife today also brought in a good crowd. So the numbers for lunch are definitely a lot higher, so we could use some more help in the bistro. Uh, also reception and also dispatch are the two places that we're continuing to look for uh, volunteers and have an ongoing need there as well. So that's just a little picture in terms of uh, volunteer recruitment and what we're looking for. Also wanted to give you an update on NCTV. We talked about that at our last meeting uh, regarding the videos being available online. They are, as of currently, available online now. Uh, what happens is NCTV puts those videos on a YouTube channel, and you probably noticed the old links that were to meetings of the past. With you know, There was a line of meetings there, and you'd have to click on the individual date that you wanted, and it would take you to that video. Now, at the top of that column on the website, there is a, a link that takes you to the YouTube channel for the Council on Aging. Oh so when you click on that link, it takes you not only to one meeting, but the list of our meetings up to including our last meeting in April. So all of that's there. NCTV is the one that, that uploads that content to YouTube. Mm -hmm. We adjusted the link on the website, and so it's all there now from, all from a video perspective. So you can binge watch it. <laughs> Get some popcorn. <laughs> the year in review. <laughs> so we can show them a year and then it's have all lunch. We're on YouTube. There you go. They're all on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, in terms of the working groups, there's uh, four that we're looking at at this point, and really the purpose of the working groups are really to inform um, some of the decisions that we're making here, uh, taking a look at the programs that we're offering, the services that we're offering, what needs we're meeting, what needs maybe we're not meeting. Uh, there are two groups that are currently, to answer your question, there are two groups that are currently meeting already. One is a movie committee. They're the, the group of people that are selecting the movies that we show every Thursday. And that group is meeting the last Thursday of the month. So their next meeting would be Thursday, May 30th, and they meet at 12.30. Uh, that's right before the movie, so they come and have lunch. We have our meeting together and then stay for the movie. The other group is the arts and culture group uh, that are specifically focusing on programming around arts and culture. Uh, and also one of the things that they've also addressed is, uh, as you see on the agenda there, is evaluating programs. So taking a look at what we're currently offering, how, how to evaluate that, uh, looking at both ways to do that online as well as paper, uh, to get a sense of are our current programs hitting the mark, 
um, and also including in that uh, an, a question saying kind of what classes would you like to take here? You know, what, what are we missing? What would you like to see? Uh, the other two groups are groups that we're working to get off the ground at this point, um, and there'll be two of them. One is an inclusivity and diversity in programs group that really wants to make sure that we're offering programs um, across the board, across uh, you know, looking to be inclusive and diverse in, in what we offer. And that group is going to have their first meeting on Friday, June 14th at 11. And then the fourth group is uh, taking a look at um, both the, the building upgrades uh, and the outdoor furniture that's already come up in the conversation. As Marie mentioned, we're going to have an architect come in. But we also want to have a working group around that as well uh, to, to you know, kind of inform some of the decisions with that as well. And that's going to meet on Friday, June 7th at 11 o'clock. The last two groups you just mentioned, have they been formed? Are we mm -hmm. looking for volunteers? We're looking for volunteers for both of those, yes. Mm -hmm. And we can't have a quorum. <laughs> so we can't we can't have um, we can only have a certain number of board members mm -hmm. so that we don't actually then have a quorum. <laughs> so um, but we we want this to be mixed with patrons, council members, and staff. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, and nice. we're going to make sure that we invite patrons that are represent different groups so that we get, you know, a good cross section. Do you have um, like a set number of people that you want? Like I want ten people, twelve people, four or six citizens, two. How many here. people have you had in the? It's, it's been, yeah, it's been anywhere. Not everybody's able to make every meeting, but it's roughly been about eight on both eight committees. All said and told. Probably like eight, I would think eight to ten okay. um, would be a good number. Just kind of have a healthy dialogue. And the hope also is is that the people on those working groups are also gathering feedback from other people as well. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that, you know, that's part of So it, it, eight or ten people in the room, but many voices mm -hmm. kind of represented through the people there. So definitely, Michael, like speak up if there's one that you want to be on. It's just that we don't want the council to be each one of the those groups. We yeah. want, you know, I'm on one of the in one of the uh, the arts and culture, but you know, Jean is also on that one too. But we're the only two board members on that, so, yeah, so we're not overwhelming. Sure. Anyway. So, so yeah, on. speak up if you want to be on them, and, okay. and you can be the first one at it. So email you. Yes. For and people who want to. Yeah, and I just wanted to say also that I envision that the inclusivity and diversity group may break off into different mm -hmm. groups because um, one of the things I want to start on right away, I think, um, because we've got an LGBTQ luncheon launched, um, that, that that's going to form its own group in some ways, and there may be some council members that want to join that. Um, group that's planning activities and, and presentations, but the, the, um, the next thing I sort of on my list was doing a group for around men's programming and, and um, just identifying ways to support men being more comfortable here because it is a female dominated population. And, um, you know, I, I've been talking to the Y about doing some specific programming for men's fitness. Okay. Um, so I think, um, you know, I've talked to the pool group about, you know, what kinds of things they might want to support them here other than pool. Um, you know, they brought up ping pong, but I think, um, you know, I've thought about having like a men's, a men's group form. In Williamsburg that was a very popular thing that really grew and it met outside of the senior center. Um, and so sometimes people don't necessarily find their niche here and so um, but it could it can percolate from here so i um, kind of thinking that's probably where we'll start and then we can form subgroups of that for other topics so. i would be interested in working on that type of group <laughs> great great Sim has you. just written your name down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not volunteer. <laughs> and it is true that like I work out at the fitness center and there's kind of like half and half in there on days. There's quite a few men that do mm -hmm. use the fitness center. So, you know, the ping pong, the pool, that's really what they're, they're looking at. But there's got to be more things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I offer 
to be on to Kim to, to be on the inclusivity and diversity. And it, it falls in line with since I chaired the um, Valley Jewish Seniors Group, so we can bring in all kinds of. And that's why I was confused. Culture would that include cultural diversity and the inclusivity and diversity? Just so it's more yes. clear. Yes. Yeah. And, and religious. And, and yeah. all no of that. religion. I can happen it. here. Mm -hmm. It can happen elsewhere, yeah. but it can't happen here. Well, what we could, what I was thinking is... Um, <laughs> Sorry. No, no, Sorry. I'm not trying to, no, but yeah. what I wanted to, um, <laughs> what many people have brought up is making sure that um, at the holiday time it's kind of neutral. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which I know you've paid attention to that, you know. Yeah, no, we know. need to, we need to be very non-denominational yeah. and um, not and you know we did have we did have um, we just put up a little Christmas tree and a menorah and something for Kwanzaa and, and just said happy holidays on um, one place we didn't we didn't right. pull out all the stops yeah around that's great around yeah. one kind I of pulled holiday. it I brought a menorah in a few years ago so that one might be the one I I don't know <laughs> yeah. the one I brought in yeah I have so. gotten feedback this this place used to be a lot of Christmas decorations mm -hmm. so it we are we have been getting feedback that there where are the Christmas decorations so it's kind well, of like some people missed it some people didn't yeah. feel comfortable so it's not the war on to be really splashy yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you know we ha we're trying to balance things out so have it be more balanced yeah. yeah. Well, well, thank you. And municipal space, it should be non-denominational. Non we are not allowed to, but that doesn't, yeah. And I mean, it's it's just, yeah, it's been. So, I think we should just bring in a pile of snow and put it in the corner. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and well, we frosty it. <laughs> well, we oh, had, God. like, the school kids put up the snowflakes and, you know, I mean, we, we can do all kinds of decorations, so it just can't be. Specific or, or like I forgot to bring in a box of matzah, you know, and that would have that would fall for Passover in case anyone's like, what the hell is she talking about, <laughs> you know, um, because uh, people who observe Passover, which was the same, we started the same weekend as Easter, as some of you may know, um, and I kicked myself because I could have brought one in and just a few and donated them in the cafe, and people could have had them. But, for people who might have been um, not wanting to eat bread. Well, Kevin, know. Kevin's very, he's being very cognizant of these, mm -hmm. of cultural needs and traditions, so, and. Um, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. their matzah offered? No, matzah, but I think no. there was like, yeah. there was macaroons and stuff like that. Whenever I yeah, but I mean matzah, but all I'm saying is I, I'm happy to take responsibility or maybe confer with Kevin if you would like um, to yeah. honor. I mean, I think that's something in know, the committee that people can that talk will, about ways yeah. that we can be culturally sensitive. Sensitive, that's the word. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah. I recommend that if none of you, if someone of you have not eaten at the the bistro, please do. It's delicious and wonderful. <laughs> and if you let Kevin know in advance, you can have your dietary needs met, mm -hmm. which I've had some good vegan meals. And as we know, the volunteer luncheon all the vegan food was eaten before I got there, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was, so it was totally buffet. Point. It was yeah. on the buffet. People thought it was fish. <laughs> oh. So, but anyway, um, you know, you can you can put that down when you make when you make a reservation. You can't walk in and expect your meal to right. be. Well, there, you can but, ask though. You can but if, yeah, Kathy. Yeah, are there plans because he's a nutrition coordinator? But are there plans to have like calorie counts and or like. Um, sodium, sodium, and sugar, or, um, carbohydrates. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of people. In fact, I'm glad because we, we made a mention in the in the um, bistro because it was just all of these carb stuff that mm -hmm. there are people who are diabetic, and I'm glad he's got some eggs and other things there. What's my talking about? Yogurt, no, yeah. Like fruit. So I think that would be yeah. important for people to have because if you so are, do we need to form another committee. No, we can do it. I mean, no. I have a mess of a healthy or a nurse. We can, have, you, we can, can you can get food yeah. instead of dessert there. And I, I don't know about it being heavy carbs. He always has oh, a salad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But it is. I mean, if you do you know, nutrition. So, I mean. Right. So, just, just, I mean, just if we're, we're, we're promoting good health mm -hmm. and stuff like that, mm -hmm. it's important to have that. Makes so. sense. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think you may be able to do that. Um, but, uh, He's not a dietitian, so if he can get that um, from recipe, yeah, yeah, there's a formula. I will look into it. Yes, 
Credit these in nutrition. Jim, are you done with your report? Um, so, um, so we had Arts Night out last week, and the, and last month we had, I think when Art Salon was here, we had a cultural arts grant for them to come. And we had 100 people here that night. Um, and then this last Friday we had, I'm not sure how many people, but not as many as 100, but it was, it's really sort of um, moving forward. People are, we're on the, on the map now, and people are coming. Um, and I, and I was excited about this because it was, um, the artist is deceased and her daughter was here to talk to people and her grandson's band was playing in the, in the great room and they were really good and people, you know, really enjoyed that. Um, um, so, and there's lots and lots of new programs. Um, we're, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's just a lot more people coming here. Um, and, um, you know, of course, parking is always an issue. Um, so, you know, we are, I am, I'm more and more feeling like I need to start offering incentives for carpooling um, and um, to just address the, the lack of spaces. I think we, we have the capacity of 250 in the great room and we have 67 parking spots. <laughs> so, wow. yeah. Kathy, um, a bunch so of parking Kathy has her. Kathy has her hand up. Quick question. Do you know when people come like the programs like the Arts Lawn or something, do you know numbers and stuff like that? Do they sign in at all? So they did, yeah, they did okay. sign in. Okay. That's how I know there were 100 people here. Okay. Okay. Oh, um, for the Arts Lawn, yeah, because I know they pay to come into the Arts Lawn, but. No, they didn't pay. You used to have to ask to have a donation. Well, lawn. it was it was free, but if there was, if you wanted to provide yeah. a donation, you could. Yeah. Um, is it possible that PTA is no, considered settling for some special events so that we can let people know that if you want to come mm -hmm. as a shuttle at such mm -hmm. and such a spot, they will take you and bring you mm -hmm. back? Do you think PBTA would be interested or open to hearing such a request? PBTA, no. Mm -hmm. um, that they, um, they're, they're helping to fund our van program. Um, because they are no longer transporting seniors, mm -hmm. they oh, are helping us to that. transport seniors. So they they transport people with disabilities, okay. mm -hmm. and some of those people are mm -hmm. seniors. But um, but we um, we aren't we aren't able to kind of expand our van use as much as I would like. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking at the sustainability of the current structure of our van program. Um, so, you know, when possible, I would like to do that, but we've, we've tried a couple of times and not a lot of people actually take mm -hmm. us up on it. So, um, that's why I kind of think carpooling is, is more sustainable and probably more, uh, accessible or, um, appealing mm -hmm. to, to a lot of people. Is, is yeah. the World War II? A lot available as a backup. Anyone that hasn't yeah. had been, mm -hmm. but it is in the evening. So, it's not as much because they have yeah, a right. lot of things going on in the evening. Mm -hmm. And they, yeah. So mm -hmm. daytime, yes, they let us use their lot a lot and, and the Gazette. Business. But we are competing with Netta because the um, mm -hmm. there are contracts with the Gazette and the hotel, I believe, for Netta to have spillover parking. So we, um, you know, we we don't have as much parking available nearby that we can kind of spill into. Mm -hmm. But we are in communication with. And, it's not, and Salvo doesn't have any extra space. Well, we do spill over into yeah. Salvo. Yeah. 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 Yes, did you? No. Okay. Um, all right, so I, yeah, so the budget request, I talked about that. Um, and currently I am, uh, Kim and I will be interviewing and over the next two weeks for programming coordinator, which has been added into the budget, um, or I should say the marketing, program and marketing position that was in place before that then became the marketing position is now going to be program coordinator and we will be outsourcing the marketing to the Gazette, which is going to be um, you know, give us a lot more marketing coverage um, and design services. So I'm really excited about that. Um, How many hours? Oh, 
the programming coordinator, 35. Okay. And the, um, some of you came to the, um, the listening session we did last mm -hmm. month. Um, do you, you want to talk about it, Kathy? Should, Kathy was writing up the notes. Cindy. Cindy. I mean, Cindy, sorry. Um, the listening session that we conducted. I just, I, I brought this and I, I won't take much to pass this way. And what this is, is just the, the top sheets are the script <laughs> with it, with those followed, the discussions, and then the last two are the top line summaries. Not every individual <coughs> comment, but each table summarized the comments from that table based on the top three questions. So if you read it in order, the, and this was just for our new colleagues, um, the age-friendly initiative we had, we were formally designated but as an age-friendly city, this is back in <coughs> late April. Okay. And as part of that, we did an open listening session just to get feedback from folks who came about what makes Northampton great, what would be making even better is content. So it's interesting, a lot of housing, a lot of transportation, mm -hmm. surprises. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people talk about the quality of life about Northampton being a very friendly and welcoming community, which is not surprising, but it's, 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 mm -hmm. I've had to use it to see it articulated. Yes. Um, as, as, by several mm -hmm. people. And just the, and the beauty of this, the open spaces, the greenery, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting, um, there are no particular order, they simply it was just mm -hmm. a, a duck. But just thought you would get, be interested. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do additional listening sessions. This one was at one in the afternoon, obviously limiting a whole host of people. And this, the goal is to have people of all ages, because this is about age-friendly community now and in the future. So, mm -hmm. so obviously evening sessions, we can answer. And also going to where people are, you know, existing groups when they need to do some of the same things. Mm -hmm. It's just the first line take. What was mm -hmm. Thank you for collating yeah, Thank you for yeah. doing it. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was really, it was really, um, people I think really enjoyed having those conversations. And, and there were some new suspects. Yeah. Some people that were mm -hmm. not regulars yet. So mm -hmm. Kathy and I, Helped in a few people. Yeah, a lot of people. Helped in the middle and helped yeah. in the younger people. Yeah. You were, Kim, you were there too, right? Yeah. yeah. And Michelle. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cindy. Wow. Um, and then the health and safety fair um, mm -hmm. was a big success. I think we had over 70 vendors. Um, and um, we, this year, we did something a little different. We, um, it's been done for 17 years, and there's always been a program for the day. Um, but this this year, we did a resource booklet so that we can pass that out over the year um, and compile all the resources in the area. Um, probably doesn't have every single thing, but we'll just improve on it every year, and then it's really something that we can give to people throughout the year um, rather than just on that day. It was very impressive. Um, I gave her some, um, some, I gave Michelle some, some resources. And say in the mayor's Facebook page, how photos as well. Yes, the mayor does a lot of marketing. I was going to say, when he says that, when you have the mayor. We do have a Facebook page now. Um, there were a lot of um, issues just trying to get it set up um, because they're, it's a little trickier now. So, um, but we do have it. Um, please like us and follow us and um, and if you're not getting the constant contact email every week please tell me so we can make sure you get on it because um, that really is sort of a, you know a, a follow-up to the Chronicle and it and it gives you a sense of what's going on here every week and People are really enjoying having that, um, just a reminder of like, what is for lunch on Tuesday? And what is the movie this week? And when there's a new program added that didn't make it into the Chronicle, we make sure that we get it in constant contact so that people hear about it. Um, so, and we are adding a lot of instructors for all kinds of things. So if you know people who want to volunteer their time or 
be paid a small stipend to run at a class. We have, you know, we have the art room is the new studio workshop is really um, getting a lot of use now for all kinds of painting and drawing and um, drumming and ukulele. And so I, you know, we, we really just need more instructors because um, people are really, really, I think, hungry for cultural and creative programming. And expensive so. cultural stuff, because there are a lot of things out there. How many people are you able to reach through constant, the constant that email? Uh, it goes out to 1,800 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Marie, um, I don't know if we discussed this before, but we, now we have our own designated janitorial services, right? That young man has been hired as? Uh, we do have it. Yes, we do have a custodian. So if you have, no, I've noticed that things are much better now that we have our own regular person. And uh, who's doing the gardening? Somebody's the city them. takes care of the landscaping. Mm -hmm. um, we did do um, we did do the pollinator mm -hmm. workshop good. here, and that was um, really successful. There were a lot of people here for that, and um, there is a um, instructor from the Conway School of Design who's volunteered to help design, redesign the landscaping here um, to make it easier to maintain and to be more pollinator friendly. So mm -hmm. we will be looking at that um, and that will, that I think that will help spruce us up a bit. And I don't know if you've noticed that um, the siding has been getting some work too. So, um, you know, we're going to learn. Oh, the cutout is in the... Oh, and if you didn't notice the new notch in the reception desk, but I've been asking for it for a year, That's great. and they finally came and cut out a notch. And you know, it's funny because people have said, "Oh, I thought it was always there." So mm -hmm. clearly, mm -hmm. um, it it's uh, it belongs. They saw it like you did. They saw it. They had vision. <laughs> um, yeah. So I I just think it's um, we're working on making uh, more dedicated time from our volunteers sitting there so that people have a they can stop as they're walking by and say, "Where do I go?" For um, so, or have someone say bring it down the wall. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like a wall to me, that big desk. Mm -hmm. But um, and Smith Vocational originally built that desk, um, and so and they just built the new built-in cabinets in the workshop too. So they're really really nice. Bob and Ben, any questions you might have or things you want to add? I'm playing this part. And I'd like to encourage people to bring feedback, you know, to this group. Um, I'd love to hear great things that are happening. I think that the senior center in the year that Marie's been here has gone through a lot of changes and there's a lot going on here that you know, and having that great nutrition <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. Chef and you know having great meals and everything. And I, I've I've been getting good feedback about mm -hmm. how things look and um, mm -hmm. less cluttered. You know, much you know more things to do. So bring that back to us and let us know also what people are saying to you that that you need. Like for instance, one woman caught me at the health fair and she said, "Well, I just wish that there was medical transportation." And she, I was like the right person for her to say that to because I do the medical transportation. I said, "Well, what do you need?" She goes, "Well, I need to get to the doctor." Blah blah blah. And I said, "Well, did you know? Did you know?" <laughs> she she thought the vans should be used for that. They are. Well, they are, but. You know, not it, well, not what she needed it for. Oh. Something she was told. She thought she was told that those the vans don't do medical transportation. And I said, well, you know, I do door to door transportation. I'll walk you in. I'll sit in the waiting room, and some of the medical people will do that. And she was totally flabbergasted that that existed. So it's it's great to hear. You know, like I was able to give her information that she could use, and hopefully she will. You were the tenth but, time she heard it. <laughs> so you have to hear things ten times before they sink in. So I think it's, if you look through the list, you'll see in the comments on the, from the listening session mm -hmm. that it's a similar issue that we've talked about before, is people aren't aware. It's not that it doesn't sort of exist, but if, if it doesn't exist, if I don't know about right. it, it doesn't exist anymore. Right, right, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. That's part of the challenge. Yes, Michael? Hello. On the other side of that, one of the things that I've noted is that since it's become clear to a fair number of people in this city that programs are expanding, I get approached because 
they now think that oh, people are doing all kinds of things and they thought of this. So that's a really positive kind of response to what they see. And it's eliciting, I think, from some people a kind of sense that, geez, you're doing this, have you ever thought of that? And uh, I run into that a fair amount. So that's why we have the working groups, so people are, you know, people can um, actually join those groups and bring their ideas. Mm -hmm. So I think that when people approach you, you should encourage them yeah. to. I mean, I wrote about it in my last article that we are really, um, we want people to come forward. We can't have a room of 50 people and have a conversation. We need to, like, people should choose what they're interested in sure. contributing their ideas to. Um, mm -hmm. And we want to get a cross section of the people that come here, but we can't we can't have a conversation with everyone who comes here at once. So we have to chunk it out into little working groups. Mm -hmm. um, That's smart. So, yeah. Yeah. you still have the suggestion box, right? For people oh yes, people I have the suggestion box. Okay. Mm -hmm. and you have yeah. suggestions. There are always suggestions <laughs> in it. Like to encourage positive suggestions. Any that are there any that you you know thought made sense or <laughs> some sometimes they're really good suggestions yeah. and sometimes they're you know um, just complaints. Some people sign their name and some people don't. I can't really respond to people who are anonymous. Um, I can only really just take that yeah. their information uh, their their suggestion in. Uh -huh. um, but you know, change is hard, and um, you know, I think that we 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 try, but we can't please everyone um, because everybody wants different things. You know, some people want whip, whipped cream, some people want Cool Whip. You know, I mean, it's just you know, it's everybody wants what they want. So we we're going to keep listening, and we're going to keep trying to. Accommodate, and I think when we do some assessments and get feedback through surveys, that we'll we'll be able to assimilate all of that feedback. Um, but we still have to make choices that maybe don't appeal to everyone. So, so our next meeting is the second um, Thursday of the month. Thank you for coming this Thursday. We changed the meeting because of the health and safety fair. Mm -hmm. So that's June thirteenth, three thirty here. And um, is there? I know the other council took summer months off, a month or two months off during the summer. I, I'm not planning to do that unless people think that that's the best thing to do. I mean, it's just one day for a few hours. If you're on vacation, you excuse yourself. You know, you don't have to come. If you don't come back <laughs> just for this meeting. Right. So we'll just continue through the mm -hmm. summer if that's all right with everybody here. It um, makes sense. You know, it takes all summer. Michael. Do a little bit. I have a separate question that has nothing to do with this. Just a question before we adjourn. What were you saying? Do we have to do elections in June? In June, right? Elections. If if people I have to look at if, yeah, it depending on if your your term if our terms have expired. I don't remember if it's July for the fiscal year. Check if it's June, you'll have to look. The yeah. need for an election. Yeah. Well, it's for it's officers. for the officers. officers. But the officers have either a two or three year term. Oh. Mm. As officers or as no. officers? No, I think it's no, as no. members. One year? They're one year, but they can be renewed. Oh, okay. Who wants it's to be the, it's, the, <laughs> it's the council members who either have a three year or the unexpired oh, okay. term of somebody else. Okay. I didn't realize that. But I'll, I'll, I'll check that. We have, we have one of those terms. Member terms are up. The member terms who are up this young. year were Mark, who's resigned, oh, and Don, Donna, Donna and who, and, and you said you were interested in being reappointed? Okay. Yeah, okay, I told her that name that okay. she resigned. Right. So those were the two. So, and then I think that um, Ben and Robert are filling terms that are going to start up again in June? Like yes. Unfinished terms and then, yeah. So I don't I don't know if the city said that you would have to. Because you would either be a one or a two year, yeah. right? When they. 2021, I believe that was okay. for the term, June through 20. Yeah, okay. Okay, all right. But we do have to vote on officers in June. Um, 
So nominations, um, before we've given them to you, Kathy, or we've given them to Linda, nominations for officers. Well, here's your, I mean, but sometimes we had a nominations <coughs> committee we could seek out people and stuff like that. You know. And we had people that were in positions for years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. So they, it nev nobody ever wanted to be the chair or the vice chair nobody or the, the clerk. Mm -hmm. um, so if you'd like to let us know, mm -hmm. let, let Linda know. Mm -hmm. I think Linda might be the best one to yeah, get the names. Yeah, you can email me in the, yourself as well, you know, mm -hmm. if anybody wants to be here. Mm -hmm. So we need, we, there's something in the bylaw that we need notification. I yeah, I have to look that up that because we could mm -hmm. create a nominating committee. I have to just see if, um, I have to look that up in the bylaws. Mm -hmm. That's, that has to be fast if it's next month. Yeah, no, no, I will look it up yeah. tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's adjourn. Did, 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 oh, Michael, I'm sorry. I just wonder, I had to miss a meeting. The tap dancing and floor stuff. I, had, I don't know what's happening. That's sort of okay. Did it's you okay. read? It, it's in the minutes. I, in yeah. these minutes? Okay. Yeah. In the past minutes, which I think were emailed to you. Um, yeah, I wasn't able to do email. Right, so so I, I haven't seen it. All right. Well, it's in your email. But it's been resolved. It's been resolved. It's been resolved. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I just wanted to quickly mention other other that I don't know if it's still an issue, but it, if it is, we could revisit it. Um, about a year ago, bullying here was a problematic, mm -hmm. where we had identified that, and there were some issues around that, and at the time I had um, passed on some info about working with the people from um, uh, not Glen Meadow, but um, Armbrook, uh, Julie and uh, Beth, long story short, I went to a presentation they did about seniors and bullying, and they're calling it people-friendly, and it's something they're taking the show on the road, they presented at various conferences and such, and it, it's still, if they were, Julie said I'd be happy to come if you all would like me to, and there, I don't believe, there's no charge for it. Right, so, yeah, um, no, I was just talking about that today, so I will be looking into into that. So yeah, it still was issue. A, a great program. And they said it happens out in the community, it could happen mm -hmm. in senior centers or in nursing homes or mm -hmm. you know, assisted living mm -hmm. said it's uh, pretty can be pretty pervasive mm -hmm. and kind of like a throwback to how people believe, behave in junior high school almost. You know, but yeah. there were some good um, techniques for dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also. Okay. Yes. So we're just looking into that. Okay, so could I have a motion to adjourn? I I motion. Oh, to okay. Adjourn. You have to say it out loud. Oh, I I motion to adjourn. Okay. All right. Second. I'll second. Yeah. Kathy. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstaining. <laughs>